Well, Muhammad Kudus has slipped out of the hands of Mikel Ateta and he's now going to a side. Non Chelsea, but a Brighton side. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? This is the Arsenal News Show and hope you guys are really having a fantastic morning where you are really watching us from. I know most of the people that are really watching us from. It's already the 6th of August, the day that is going to see <coughs> Arsenal take on Man City at Wembley in what we call the community shield so smash the like button comment and share if you're really watching us for the very first time endeavor to subscribe to this channel as well to visit on stories that we do upload in here on a daily we are talking key and tne demanding for my game time at arsenal and lastly michaela teta speaking about how he overcame the trophy loss to man city of the premier league season that ended on the 28th of may that is 2023 let's see close to let's see close to <coughs> 400 likes much in this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily now we thank god for the gift of life christians i think today you guys have to go to church to those that don't go to church like me and pray from home God is omniscient. Let no one really threaten you that if you don't go to church to gather, God won't answer your prayers. God will because God is everywhere. He is omniscient. So just exalt him and he'll get you the best that you deserve and your endeavors will be obviously fulfilled to the fullest. And my Muslim viewers and subscribers, I love you and Barak Laufikum. So thank you and let's start it off with Muhammad Kudu's story broken today by david austin <clears throat> exclusive brighton and holv albion reach agreement in principle with ajax to buy muhammad kudus for 40 million euros 20 year old Ghanaian international close to agreement on personal terms deal not fully done but key but key disabi target plus all and would be brighton record signing that is it now after bringing in this story of Muhammad Kudos, then Fabrizio Romano went ahead to give us what we call <clears throat> another authentication as far as this deal is concerned. He said, Brighton and Ajax have an agreement in place for Muhammad Kudus. The deal between clubs is advanced since July. Always been waiting for the player. Fee around 40 million euros as David Austin reported at first. It depends on the player now waiting to agree personal terms. Now, Muhammad Kudus. You know, it really sounds as a surprise <coughs> that it's bright or they're gonna hate obviously get this date and hijack it from Arsenal. Because recently we broadcasted a story on this channel as Chelsea were obviously attacking the situation of Muhammad Kudus. And they've gone ahead to obviously not hijack it. It's bright and they've gone ahead to hijack the deal of Muhammad Kudus. But it shows you how Arsenal is not interested in signing Muhammad Kudus because if you are to convert 30 million pounds that Arsenal that Arsenal are going to invest into the deal of they are going to invest in the deal of <coughs> David Raya, it obviously boils out into 30, I think it's 35 million pounds, meaning that there'll be, it boils out to 34 million euros, meaning that there'll be just 6 million euros away from the realistic evaluation of Ajax in Muhammad Kudus. Now, Brighton had been chasing this deal for some time and looks like Muhammad Kudus is really expecting some other some other advances from Arsenal and Chelsea. That's why he hasn't gone ahead to agree personal terms with Brighton, though the clubs have gone ahead to agree. If I told you Muhammad Kudus, you'd obviously fancy to play for Arsenal or Chelsea. <clears throat> and I think he's been really waiting for a movement coming in from Chelsea. And I think he's expecting one to come. And the only way he will obviously go to Brighton is when Arsenal and Chelsea don't launch what we call a of an official bid to the side but if at all that official bid really comes in through i think it's really going to be so much important for muhammad kudus you know as a person who broadcasts live in africa 
I obviously know what Chelsea and Arsenal mean to a player like Mohamed Kudus. He loves to be playing for these teams. Manchester United, Arsenal and Chelsea. And these two are really so much of a view that they've gonna hate obviously <clears throat> house very many very many African players. When you look at Arsenal, they had <clears throat> Kolo Toure, uh, Roren Meyer, Song Bilong, Emmanuel Adebayo, Gavinho, mm, who else? Pedic Medic Abomiang. Very many huge African stars have been playing at Arsenal for a very, very long time. And right now, they have El Nini, they have Thomas Pate, you know? So, mm, which other African player do they have? I'm talking about Arsenal. They have some good African players that really play for them. When you look at Chelsea, I think it has been the biggest hood of African players. For example, Michael Essien, you know, Jeremy Njitab, um, Edward Humendi, Didier Drogba, Samuel Eto, um, which other they brought in, Obi Mikel Chekube. They had very many African players, and I think. They had players from Ghana, Senegal, South Africa, and Nigeria. So, him coming in from West Africa, he would have loved to go ahead and really play for those teams. But because these teams are really slow, they're really waiting for maybe alarms and bells to obviously alert them about the presidency of Mohamed Kudus. They've gone ahead <coughs> not to put in a lot of effort to sign this player who really loves to be an Arsenal or Chelsea player. That's why he is known yet in the mood to agree personal terms with Brighton, meaning that there is room for Arsenal to come back and get this deal back into their favor. Will Arsenal come back to get this deal back into their favor? Let's wait and see the further developments in the coming two or three days. Will Chelsea do the needful? Let's wait and see how this is going to happen. For Chelsea, are they obviously going ahead to obviously lose out on Kudus? Because maybe Brighton is willing to use the money. They've gone ahead to charge them to bring in what we call Muhammad Kudus. Especially if 40 million pounds is like 36 million pounds. Sorry, 40 million euros is like 36 million pounds. They get it off the 100 million pounds they're going to get from the sale of Quesido to Chelsea. Obviously, that is something great for this club of Brighton and that will be some good business and if at all they happen to get this player it will be a record purchase by Brighton in their history. De Zabi is looking to have him on so it's it that he takes him to where he deserves to be. After that let's talk some good sense about Kian Tierney and it has been told to us by Ame Lawrence. He's saying that <clears throat> when he came on, it was a reminder of the edgy competi competitiveness that he brings. That only he brings. And last season, I had resigned myself to the fact that he would be sold. But it looks like that might have changed because he deserves more game time. Now, to me, I think Kian is one of those players at Arsenal that has not gone ahead to be used to his fullest as far as Mikel Ateta is concerned. When Ateta came in here, in his first two seasons, he used Kian Tierney a lot. And in the season of 2021-2022, he brought in Tavares. And Tavares had some attributes that Kian Tierney never really possessed because Tavares was a press-resistant player and he could obviously play what we call inverted left back, meaning that he wanted that kind of left back but Tavares had no discipline and it could obviously cost us no in certain games so when it reached that level he went in for Zinchenko and when he brought in Zinchenko obviously it marked the end of Kian Tierney's career and I don't know the reason as to why Arsenal still keeping Kian Tierney at the club as the coming in of Julian Timber has shown us that he can also play the left back position and Ateta is having him as an option and we've seen the previous games Ateta starting him at the left back position and not playing key and TN. meaning that today as Arsenal takes on Man City we might see Julian Timber take on take on 
maybe Foden or Bernardo Silva <coughs> into the left back position of the full back as Aston takes on Man City. And for Kientieni, I believe their team's interested in him. At Villa, he's from a manager that bought him from um, Celtic, that is Unai Emery, wants his services. Then Newcastle wanted his services. Man City at a certain point X wanted his services and other teams. So wait and see how Kientien is going to obviously adapt to the system of Arsenal, but it looks like he has no space. He has no space at Arsenal as it stands because Tomias will play ahead of him on any day as the left back of Arsenal. Zichenko will, Jakub Kivio will, and Timba will, meaning that there are three left backs that are ahead of him. And I don't see him really getting what you call ample playing time at Arsenal. And if at all you are his agent, you obviously have to see him leave the club of Arsenal and find a better club that's going to give him enough playing time that he really desires. Now, Mikel Ateta. He's one of those managers going to hate to obviously tell us today about how he felt and how he overcame losing the Premier League title to Man City last season. In the last seven games of the season, that's when he gave up the trophy. He said, I had to go through that and it took me a few weeks. I don't know if I've gotten over it and probably I don't want to because I need that to be better. Now, obviously, you'll understand that Ateta cannot go of this because it was really painful if you know what Arsenal had you know and the season they had it was really great and if I really had gone ahead to win that trophy it would have gone ahead to go down in history as one of the managers was gonna hate to give them the best they deserve as a team of Arsenal but let's wait and see whether it's going to come out and really compete highly this season because Liverpool was off Man United was off Chelsea was off you know, it was like a two-horse race. But this time around, teams have gone ahead to charge. You know, Chelsea, Newcastle, um, Aston Villa, Brighton, Manchester United, uh, Man City, Liverpool. They are all ready to tussle it out. And the first 10 games of the season are obviously going to show us whether Ateta is really back in the moods to obviously win what we call <coughs> the league. And is he going to compete with these other teams? Because when he was competing with just one, he failed in the last seven games of the season because I was here sounding it every day that Arsenal is going to go ahead and lift the league. But they went ahead not to lift it because it looks like the ingredients that we are required to obviously spice up the trophy and obviously get that meal ready to, for them to lift the trophy was not part of the shopping they made when they went to the supermarket or grocery to make those shopping. So, your thoughts on to Mohamed Kudus slipping out of Mikelata's hands are welcome in the comment section below. What do you make about Arsenal? Will they get back to Mohamed Kudus because the players not yet going ahead to agree personal terms? And then, what do you make about Kian Tierney? What advice would you give him? Do you want him to stay at Arsenal or do you want him to leave Arsenal for enough playing time? Remember, the Euros are under the way and he's one of those dependable players at the Scottish national team. And lastly, Mikel Ateta confirmed us that he has not yet gotten over with the threat from Man City that they lost the league to. So, Rock and David remains my name. I sign out for now. See you later. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. My Muslim viewers and subscribers, Barak, Laufikum, see you later.